Continuing here. Yeah, you know, Alex Jones is on this thing about this boom that, you know, we want to boom for the people. And the people don't want to boom. They want stability. Okay, they want slow, steady progress. Okay, a boom, what good is a boom if you're going to remain a rent slave? If you're never going to be able to enter the middle class, if it's just temporary and things are just going to be worse once the bubble bloom finally pops. No, you never want a balloon, a bubble, not if it's a crony capitalist bubble. You never want to inflate it in the first place. Okay, so let's be very clear. Let's not play stupid because it can't be that Alex Jones is, is stupid. It cannot be. And it cannot be that I'm wrong. I cannot be wrong on this issue. This is a two plus two logic issue that a child can understand and I can do the math to prove the things I'm teaching. I know what I'm talking about. I know the difference between progress and regress relative to supply and demand, free market capitalism. It's that simple. If it doesn't work for everybody, it ain't working. And it sure as hell ain't working for everybody. It's working for less and less and less. Stop playing stupid, for God's sake, for crying out loud. Be honest. I don't care how it traumatizes you. Be honest. Hereditary wealth, I don't care. As long as you don't care. If God says hereditary wealth, yes, you're my children. You're all born rich and free. Not beholden to the money masters of misery. Then let God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the Lord's prayer. And that's what's coming. So get used to it. Get used to it. Think long and hard about that. Contemplate about it. Ruminate over that. Chew on that. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. God's will is going to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And there ain't going to be any money when it is. Be very clear, very honest about that. And how are we going to slowly, steadily, gradually extricate ourselves from money, getting off the junk? The opposite economic policies is what have to be implemented. The opposite of the drugs, the opposite of crony capitalism, true capitalism, based on free market supply and demand, and a definition to progress. Where you get the opposite of currency debasement. As your currency steadily increases in worth. As your cost of living, as your taxes go down. It happens automatically just like a scale. Cost of living goes down, worth of my currency went up. It's all very simple, very rudimentary economic principle. So no more playing stupid. No more saying, oh, well, the kid doesn't know what you're talking about. She'd rather pay 50 cents for a pack of gum than 10 cents. See, that's not, no, no, no. No, progress is seeing the gum go from 10 to 50 because I made money when it got more expensive. Not caring about the people that have to pay that money to you. Do you understand how that works? Let's not play stupid. God, help us. That's what I always say. May, may God have mercy on the souls of those wicked men I'm talking about. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I'm not condemning them. I'm not their judge. I'm not their owner. I'm not the almighty creator God. I'm just a nobody, regular guy that happens to know everything about what I'm talking about here in regards to economic principles and the difference between progress and regress, okay, relative to supply and demand capitalism. I know what's supposed to happen. And you don't shrink a wealth disparity by making others poor through socialism, the Robin Hood theory, taking from others. No. You do it through sound economic policy, allowing everybody to be rich. Do you understand how that works? That is the greatest fear of our overlords, the grand puppeteers. They don't want that at all. Okay, these are miserable people. Not because the system wouldn't work and work a lot better. They just don't want us free. They want that advantage over others. They, you know, who would they be if everything was available and everybody had access to everything? You could drive any car you want, live in any house you want, wherever you want, do whatever job you want. Okay, they don't like that at all. Who are they then? They're nobody. But right now, they're men of great power running the world. 
the grand puppeteers with the patent to the copyright to the money. God almighty, I want these people thrown down. There's a restaurant, I think it was in New York, that's gone to only cashless. You can't use cash there. You know, they're, they're, I looked up the figures recently on how many people use cash, and it was something like 30-something percent of people use cash. Everybody uses cash sometimes, right? You need cash. You drive a cab, and he's a, he wants to get paid in a tip. I mean, you know, he wants cash, right? Uh, I mean, this idea that, you know, 11% they're saying in this, in this piece they did on the mainstream media are only 11% left using cash. They're liars. It's way more than that. Am I speaking to anybody that doesn't use cash? 100% of us use cash. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. They're trying, this is the mark of the beast. They're trying to wean us off. They can control everything through digital currency. Reject it. I already talked about the DACA thing, this immigrant. It's all about money, special interest groups. Democrats and Republicans have been involved in it. Black hats, both sides, telling you lack compassion while they're letting homeless people die out in the cold, spending $50 billion of your taxpayer, your money, on this problem, and yet the problem just gets worse and worse through this HUD, this Section 8 housing. But I'm a bad guy, and I'm radical for wanting to rock the crap out of the boat. Oh, the mainstream media is just all, all of a sudden they're such prudes. I mean, they never heard Trump use the word, what did he say, shithole. You know, like I'm always using crap hole. That's just another way to say it. I mean, you know, it's like, well, they say the S word is bad. Really, you shouldn't say the S word, but bullshit's all right. You know, that's one word, bullshit, you know, and and Trump said shithole. And uh, they had, oh. Well, you know, he's talking about these countries with all the extreme parties. That's exactly it. They want, that's, see, Trump knows what these people are trying to do. This is causing one clash of civilization after another. They want a perpetual, multifaceted, multilayered clash of civilizations. This helps just to keep things in disarray and confusion and nobody can get their balance and ever figure things out. But yeah, if, if they keep on bringing in people that are hungry and hard up and, and they know they know desperation better than you... What do you think you're going to get at the end of the day? As they keep taking advantage of these people, they see the cocky American worker that once had strong unions for this and that, no more. That's gone. Don't ever hope, you know, that ship has sailed, right? You're just going to have wages are just going to be down here. We're going to keep you poor. And I don't know what you're going to do when you're old and you can't afford to crack that nut anymore. I guess you'll have to go on welfare. And so many people object to that. They say, I'd rather be dead than go on welfare. So you get a lot of suicides out there. Because people that can't stand, they can't ask a hand, hand out. They, they probably don't know. I'd be bad. I'd be like those people I've always been criticizing my whole life. I criticize all those people on food stamps and Section 8 housing. And, and I just can't do it. I'd rather put a bullet through my brain. Yeah, we're all going to face our maker someday. And that's my warning to everybody that's listening to me. Be very careful how you believe. Be very sober-minded, introspective, circumspective. Ask, seek, and knock, and you shall find, if you're after the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, no matter where the chips may lay, you, you'll find it. And that's what I want. I want anybody that hears me to go to heaven, you know, to try your best. Just like me, I'm trying my best. I don't want God angry at me. we got to know what he's angry about. And you don't warn people that you say, oh, he's really angry at this group of people, this special interest group, these people that are colluding, this monopoly, this, that. Okay, then you have a duty to warn them, to speak out. <laughs> That's what I'm telling everybody. Speak out. Do something. You can't do nothing. You can't do nothing. It's going to get to you sooner or later. First they came for the tradesmen who said that. Then they came for the Jews. And, you know, I didn't do anything. And then they came for the, you know, this group or that group. And I didn't do anything. And finally they, there was nobody left to stand up for me. And, you know, what could I do? Nobody did anything for me. That's what's going to happen. Don't you understand? I mean, we need God's help, and God is helping. I mean, I don't know how people cope the way, how bad things are. I mean, I have a very hard time. I, I've got to, you know, it's very cathartic for me to speak on video. I need to get things off my chest, okay? And that's what I do. But until I see this ship turn around, until I see this train stop and get on a new track, I'm going to still keep bitching and moaning and complaining. And I'm not, again, I'm not doing it for myself. I'm a spoiled brat far as I'm concerned, relative, everything is relative. 
So relative to some poor bastard going to die out on the street, I can hardly live with myself. God knows that's true. When I go to bed at night, I think, oh, my God, oh, my God, help my brothers and sisters. Please, God, help us. These aren't criminals, God. They're just desperately poor people. No more shelters, God. Please, God, provide housing for these people. Please, God, do what it takes, God. If it means that all the evildoers die, you know, let your will be done. Whatever, let the chips fall where they weigh, but God, let your will be done. That's what I want more than anything else, more than $10 trillion, okay? I want the wound on the collective body of humanity bound, okay? I must have that, and I do believe Trump is working that direction, okay? And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I have a right to be wrong. But I'm going to hang in there. I'm going to trust in him because I think he is a good man. I don't care how rich he is. Bible doesn't say you're evil for being rich. He's doing something. He understands the same philosophy I talk about. I could go out and make 10 times as much money as Trump and give it all to my favorite charity. <clears throat> and the problems I'm talking about just get worse and worse. The system is broken. We don't fundamentally are able to confess and admit that, that so many of the jobs in our society revolve around the problem persistently. They revolve around desperate, extreme poverty to have the high crime rate, to have the abortions, to have the national debt, to have the dubious wars, to have the social welfare state. Do you understand? I'm not being cynical. I'm being truthful, as truthful as I could possibly can be. I mean, if God's got words he wants me to speak, Please, you know, let me speak them, God. That's all I'm saying. And anybody can do it. We have equal access to the Holy Spirit of truth. Okay? And that's what we should all be using. That, that power that comes from above that all of us can let flow through us. And we can be conduits. And we can, you know, kind of force it on other people. We've got to demand that ignorance is not bliss. And I'm not going to let you live or him or her or anybody. And if you try to fight the spirit of truth, then you're going down like the story of Ananias and Sapphira. The Holy Spirit can strike you dead. If you try to lie to your own conscience, who are you? You're nobody. You're on your way to hell. You know, you believe in inequality? Well, well the sky's the limit. You've got no standing. You can't tell anybody else that I think inequality blew out over here. And you're just going to fight. Oh, well, I'm fighting against that guy, but I believe in inequality too. See, you're two birds of the feather. You flock together on your way to hell. All we've had is growing inequality my whole life. I'm 59 years old. Ever since he assassinated at JFK when I was five years old, all I've seen is expanding, growing, wealth disparity, poverty increasing. Evil. Anti-American crap. Communist, totalitarian, authoritarian crap. I already talked about the teacher. I liked her a lot. I'm really happy about the uh, recent North Korean events, the talks and everything. Maybe uh, maybe this idiot, the punk kid over there running North Korea, maybe he saw the videos about the UFO taking down the warhead and he said, you know what? Wow. Maybe they found out firsthand for themselves this is real, that God's real. He's got these angels far more powerful than any human being that can do his work, do his bidding could do that sort of thing knock a nuclear warhead right out of the sky maybe that's what they found out and then some people will say oh well it was all our technology that did it was uh, space-based laser beams and all this and there are no ufos alex jones thinks it's all just recent technology won't listen to any of the people that had cosmic clearance they knew every single craft in our inventory guys like bob lazar hired by edward teller no less to reverse engineer a U-F-O, okay, everything that word man has to say is gospel, truth, okay, that's the reality, and countless others, high-ranking military men that are willing to speak on this issue at the risk of imprisonment. They've been shot at. Bob Lazar was shot at in Las Vegas, okay? It's a matter of fact, okay? It's all true, man. It's all real, man. There is other beings, Okay, and the crafts, likely any crafts that came into our inventory weren't from holy angels, but these were likely fallen angels. Okay, and some of them have been described. We've all heard about the three or four foot grays, and that's what Bob Lazar said. He said the seats in this craft were child-sized seats, okay, which would all fit together like a puzzle. 
So I'm glad about North Korea. I know that uh, Alex had Joel Skousen on. He wasn't too happy about it. And, you know, I know his reasons. He's not a warmonger. He just thinks that's the right approach. It's a preemptive strike on North Korea. Because if we let him, you know, his philosophy is that if we let him, they'll just back off now, but they'll perfect their missile technology. And, you know, so you can understand it's not like I'm poo pooing what uh, Joel Scowls, and he, he flew fighter jets in Vietnam, I think it was, you know. So, you know, I, I have a lot of regard for the guy. I mean, I don't know what kind of crap he had to do. I mean, you know, fighter jet could be used to take out the installations that were, uh, you know, enemy installations. So it didn't mean he killed anybody.